Mark, should we go and do some cooking? Let's do it. Come on, let's go. Right, so what are we doing? What so are we we're going to do a lovely piece of turbot, a uh, simply cooked piece of fish straight away in the pan. Okay. And we're going to do it with a garnish of a whole roast cauliflower. So we're going to treat it like a piece of meat. Mm -hmm. um, vegetables are coming into fashion, mm -hmm. uh, healthy, all that. Yeah, yeah, um, especially gonna, this time of year. Yeah, and then we're going to roast it, get the lovely uh, nuttiness out of the cauliflower. Mm. We're going to roast it in brown butter, lime leaf, uh, and finish it with this Vatavan spice that we spoke okay, about. Okay, so you earlier. want me to get the fish in the pan. You're doing this yep. all in the pan, you're not putting in the oven. No, we're going to go straight in the pan about six minutes. Okay. And then after, what I'm going to get you to do is a little fish, fish bone gravy, or like, like a roast gravy you'd make on a Sunday, uh -huh. except uh, we're going to use the turbid bone, so there's no waste. Okay, so you um, want this uh, skin side? Skin side down, down in the pan, yeah, and we're not going to season it yet. Um, because we want to, we don't, if we season the, the bit before we go in the pan, what's going to happen is we're not going to get a lovely even colour. You don't, it, the salt kind of draws out the moisture. Yeah, it, it creates so like it. a layer of water between the pan surface and the fish. I'm going to quickly start the cauliflower while I'm doing that. Yeah. In this pot, I'm going to get you to do the bones. So you can see, yeah. same way you might do a bit of beef. Gonna, lovely on a Saturday gonna morning. Smell to them, aren't they? We roast the bones until yeah. they're nice and golden brown and dry, okay. and we're going to fire them in here. We'll add a little bit of oil just to give them an extra bit of colour. Okay. And the idea is no waste. So in the greenhouse in Dublin, where I work alongside um, Chef Michael Villian, yep. um, turbot, we get turbot a lot during the week, and it's a very expensive fish. Yep. Um, so you use it. We treat it with a lot of care. Uh, and it's business at the end of the day, so we need so, to make a bit of money. So just talk, uh, so just talk about the uh, the jus, the gravy for a bit. So what do we got? We got red wine and vermouth. Red wine and vermouth. Okay. So it's kind of we're bringing out the meatiness. So that's why we're going to add red wine into this. So I get you to fire about half and half in there. Okay. And when then he, finally, what is this? Chicken stock. That's brown chicken stock, yeah. So we don't want to go too heavily meat by adding a beef stock. So a brown chicken Fine. stock, or even a white chicken stock. Fine. Mark, what, what if somebody wanted a bit more sort of, didn't want to splash out on turbot, what would you say would be a more kind of affordable Any white option? fish. If you ask your fishmonger for a nice bit of cod with the skin off, it'll yeah. work perfectly. Uh, John Dory, if it's, if it's plentiful, oh, yeah. can actually be quite cheap and it's, for me it's almost as good as turbot. Okay. Um, but I thought seeing as I'm over in London for yeah, Kitchen, splash I'd out. splash yeah. out on you, yeah. Matt. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you use that power budget. Okay, so, so the red wine comes down by... About, about half. half. We're going to bring, and then we add the half the vermouth. And then half the vermouth. And again, okay. we're going to bring it down by about half. Okay, fine. So we'll what, do what that. What is vermouth? What is vermouth? Yeah. It's kind of, it's like a, a fragrant. It's an aromatised wine. Oh, okay. Jane. What? <laughs> <laughs> aromatised wine. Yes. I like that. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Help me out there. Uh, <laughs> I'm not here for nothing, you know, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> So um, that's going to start coming down there. Fish, we're not going to touch, you'll notice we haven't. We're just going to let yeah. it do its thing. We're going to let it caramelise slowly. OK. Uh, and then we're going to work on the, uh, the cauliflower. Which has been blanched? It's been slightly blanched, so it's been mm -hmm. blanched for about five minutes, just to give it a little bit of softness. Sure. And we're going to try and get as much colour on there as possible. Yeah. And bring out all that rich nuttiness, and you'll get that, that, those kind of hazelnut flavours will come through. OK. Do you want to try the... Yeah. Put your tea down for a minute. Come on. <laughs> this will be a shit on the hard side. Try the aromatised wine. <laughs> Oh, it's it's now, really strong. Now, Mark, you, um, it's fair to say you spend, what, half your time in the greenhouse <laughs> in, in Dublin? Yeah, that's what the guys would definitely say yeah, in the I kitchen. Know, they see you coming in and out. And then you go <laughs> off travelling, don't you? Yeah, so I do a bit of work um, doing pop-ups, I suppose. It all started back in 2015 when I won the, the San Pellegrino World Young Chef. Um, okay. Where I represented actually the UK and Ireland region, uh -huh. um, along with my mentor Claire Smith. Yep. Um, and we went to the final in Milan in June 2015 against, uh, I suppose, 3,000 people entered. And really? We won the title. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Really? <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you like the competition? Do you kind of thrive on that? I think, yeah. Listen, uh, I was never very good at sport, even though I enjoyed it. So, cooking was my, uh, I suppose, mechanism to be competitive in. Yeah. Um, and it was nice to go and represent Ireland and put yourself out there on the world stage. Uh, and it went pretty well. And then as a result of that, I was doing pop-ups in Dublin at the, before the competition. Yeah. So what I did was I then asked after winning the competition, I wanted to bring my pop-up on a world tour around the world. So, so you kind of wow. said to them, Maybe. this is what I'm doing, now let's take it around. So it's like a tour. Yeah, so it's really? like Ed Sheeran released an album. And he goes on a concert tour. Yeah. Um, and then I released a menu and I brought that on tour around the world. So everywhere from South Africa um, to Australia, right. to Hong Kong. We did random events. We did a 100 people, six course tasting menu on a rooftop in Melbourne. Wow. Um, we did a brewery in Johannesburg. 
a car park in Moscow. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How was that car park in Moscow? It was uh, in the summer. It was very warm. Yeah. Um, really pushed the boats out there in Moscow. Yeah. <laughs> and we did, a, yeah, we did a three-course menu for. Um, I think it was like 150 guests. Right. So and do you enjoy that? Because that's quite. Um, I don't know, if you're not sort of surrounded by your own kind of pots and pans and your own kind of, you know, well-known environment, it's still kept, those things can be very tricky. You get used to working on the fly yeah. um, and making things happen. But it was a great experience, and as I travelled, I made a point of um, eating out, seeing different things, yeah. and kind of furthering what, what I knew. Yeah. Just a couple of points over here. Your fish is caramelising nicely, so I'm going to get you to turn it down slightly. OK. And we're so going this... to add a little bit of butter into your... So this is the kind of look. Exactly, yeah. So lovely, for, even yeah. golden brown. Okay, and butter in now. Butter in now, off the heat so it doesn't burn, and then we're going to slowly baste it. You'll see the cauliflower now. Yeah, that's amazing. Lime leaf, everything in there, citrus, and then we're going to add our vadavan. Okay, so this, let's this, talk about this. This yeah. is amazing. Yeah, this is very, very good. This is a uh, French colony inspired Indian spice mix. So yeah. we've got fenugreek, mustard seeds, cumin, shallot, garlic, and they dry it. They don't completely dry it. And um, they let it stay a little bit wet, and then it's mixed with castor oil to produce this very fragrant paste. That is the most Did delicious. you make that yourself, Mark? Did you make that mix-up yourself? Yeah, so we make it um, very roughly chop everything, um, yeah. dry it out for about two days, you can, in a warm place in your kitchen. Yeah. Uh, and then once it's dried, we mix it in a little bit of uh, oil, and we blend it up into that spice mix. And it goes really, really nice with um, these kind of caramelised flavours, and especially with, with fish. I'm going to add a touch more butter in there. Um, so that was the, the tour. Mm. Um, shy with butter, are you? Oh, no, I know. Mm. January. Delicious. I've given up. <laughs> <laughs> so my cauliflower is lovely colour there now. And you're also um, you're doing a, a, a television show? But yeah. Irish TV? So Irish TV, uh, RT1, it's going to be out in the summer doing a six-part series where we're going to basically tell the story of, of people and food in Ireland and mm -hmm. a little bit different. Um, Ireland has come on a lot in the last five years. Yeah. Um, we're very proud of it, and the restaurant scene is booming. Places are opening, our chefs have travelled abroad, and they're starting to do really well now. Yeah. Um, so things are happening, which has been great, because maybe it hasn't been seen in that way. And yeah. That's a lot of the work I try to do, is try to promote that. Um, I, had a, I had my stag weekend in Dublin. 20, <laughs> yeah. of, of course you 20, did. 20 years ago, <laughs> and I suspect there was one fantastic restaurant there called La Stampa at the time. Yes, it's actually and across the road from the greenhouse, yeah. Is it still there? It is. It's gone through some various... Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was a beautiful room. Beautiful room, yeah. Yes. And it, I, but but don't, what I was trying to get to, I wasn't just, you know... <laughs> I had a stag weekend. Uh, yeah. Was the fact that uh, Dublin at the time... I mean, it was, it was known for kind of stag parties and stuff like that, and now the restaurant scene has just kind of taken Things over. Things are taken yeah. off. Uh, people in their, I suppose, my age group now are really getting an appreciation for food with everything that goes with TV stuff now, and yeah. people are more into cooking, and yeah. look, it's great for our business, and uh, I, I love it. Um, and I suppose in the, yeah, in the greenhouse, we've been very, very busy. Um, and I suppose just improving that, yeah. and, and things are happening. Yeah. It's been great. And, and the produce in Ireland is just is fantastic. Then, yeah. So this is this turbot has come from Ireland, uh -huh. um, and we're going to use some amazing yogurt from Glenelg Farm. Right. Um, things were good for dairy, fish, um, amazing lamb. Um, but these are also things I like to cook. This is the yeah. stuff I'd be, if you were coming over to my house, this is what I'd be really? cracking up. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. you're invited. Very nice. I'll take that. Uh, remember, if you want to <laughs> send us your video question, uh, then film one now and email it to saturday.kitchen at cactustv.co.uk and you could see yourself on telly. Um, OK, should we start plating up? Yeah, let's do it. So this is our sauce has come down and eventually, after about two hours when we bring it down, we take the bones out after maybe 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. It comes down to this lovely glaze. Now, it's actually quite light. And this is our basically our roast turbot bone gravy. That, I mean, it is super, super So you can flip intense. that fish now, take it off the heat, and we'll just let it sit there. Oof. Quick baste. Actually, you can go straight on the board. Yeah. And uh, we can start to plate up. OK. So we've got a few bits and bobs. Mm -hmm. It's a hot night. Oh, do you know what? <laughs> My fingers are a little <laughs> out of practice <laughs> over Christmas. Right. So we've got a few things going on here. We've got this, this first of all, we've got this, this yoghurt. And this yeah. is delicious. Yeah, this is good. This is, this is proper Irish dairy. Okay. Um, it's not like the watery stuff you might see somewhere. Um, I mean, if you were to buy a shop bought, won't you, could you, to get this thickness, you'd maybe hang it, would you? Hang it. If, if it's Put not it very cold, colder. you can just hang it in a little bit of cloth. Let sure. the, uh, and actually, you get a lovely whey, which you can use. It makes fantastic sauce for fish and things uh -huh. like that, uh, the byproduct of yoghurt. 
uh, when we're talking about not wasting anything. So Right, and you need some lardo, don't you? I need some lardo, and I'm going to start carving. And we're going to finish it with a few, few different things. Um, do we have a microplane? OK. Right, so here's the lardo. Now, this is, this is interesting. I've seen this before, and I used to do it myself. Just a little bit of cured fat. Cured fat, so it's lardo de colonnata. It's a cured pork fat, which is uh, salted and then dried. Yeah. And it goes fish, obviously, this is quite meaty, and we're just going to add a little bit of meaty seasoning by napping the lardo over the top. Just to start... Do you want that over? Yes, yeah, straight over. Go for it. And just one piece? Just one piece. I, mean, look, I love the way Actually, that... put two pieces on. Two pieces. Even better. Uh, OK. I'm just going to start with a little bit of cream cauliflower. This is just cauliflower that's been cooked off in milk, and we just blend it with a little bit of butter, just like a very simple puree. OK. Uh, I'm going to carve this cauliflower. Yep. So you can see that lovely golden caramelization. Mm -hmm. Let's just carve a wedge. So this is something, look, if you're midweek and you don't fancy doing um, a full roast dinner or something lighter. And do you want a little bit a little over bit here? Quieter. A little bit over there. OK. And then the last thing that's going to go on there is some finger lime. So you have it there. So this, this again, is another amazing thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, this is brilliant. Uh, this is like uh, citrus. This is another with the vatavan. This is going to be one of your ingredients of the year. I'm going to put a little bit more of our, our vatavan on top. The brown butter. Okay. Just because it's but this this finger lime. I mean, they're like little, little sort of caviar pearls, aren't they? Yeah. Um, and they just kind Citrus of burst. Caviar, they call it. Mm. Uh, they're delicious, that, aren't they? That Definitely. bursts, and it has that lime leaf esque flavour, which goes lovely. So wow. I'm just going to fire that on the plate. Again, you could do that with. It could mm -hmm. be anything at home. Flatbreads, our fish covered in our lardo. Yep. We'll stick that on. Then our yogurt. There's your yogurt. <laughs> Perfect. So this is again the Glen Ellen, and you'll see the thickness on this. I've just put a little bit of salt through this to bring up the seasoning. And that's for me, you know, curry, yogurt, those kind of things. And we'll just finish this with a little touch of lime juice. Mm -hmm. That'll lighten it all up. I'll just get a cloth for that. That'll lighten up with a little bit of lime juice. OK. And we just finish it with our fish gravy in the middle. Just like so. Just. Delicious. And you can see it almost looks like meat sauce. Yeah. You get that lovely glaze. It does, but it's got that fishy depth. So remind us what you call that. So that's our roast Irish turmeric, cauliflower roasted in Vatavan brown butter and lime, yogurt, and a fishbone sauce. Fantastic. Well done.